Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, dying time is here once again. This time it's the COVID Cup. Eight teams enter, only one will leave with the championship because this is an elimination tournament. That's right, each round half the teams will be eliminated in a giant grinder while the rest move on to the next round. I'm the zombie of Howard Cosell. Let's take a look at these teams. First we have a returning team. They're Scaly, they're Wily, they are Super Cuddle Squad. The Lizardman team from the Corona Bowl has returned to give big hugs to everyone. We then have a team straight from Tinder. They are the internet dates, because dating them is always an adventure. We then have another team from the Amazon. Oh what a night, it's Cruel and the gang. Then from the underworld and straight off of your computer, we have the Dark Elf team known as Greetings Programs. They fight for the users. And these guys look like they fight for food. It's Maximum Ogre Drive. This is not going to end well for anybody. And what do we have here? Another Amazon team. Jeff Bezos would be proud. Order them up, folks, because these are the Amazon Primordials. They deliver a whooping straight to your door. And then, you can't kill what's already dead, though you might be able to put the werewolves to sleep. It's the Necromantic Mad Villains. And finally, we have another team from the Land of Lizards. It's Sleestack. And they come with scaly goodness. Just look at the little fella on the top there. He can't wait to get on the field to kick some ass. And that's just what we're gonna get because this is Blood Bowl. And there we can see our pairings. We've got Super Cuddle Squad versus Mad Villains. Then there's two Amazon teams duking it out. The Internet Dates versus Amazon Primordials. Greetings programs will take on Maximum Ogre Drive. A game that should be exciting since they both end in exclamation points. And Cruel and the gang will take on Sleestack. Here you can see the pairing tree. There are three rounds. The first will see eight teams facing off, then there will be four, and finally only two with one champion at the end. There can be only one, so let's get right to it. First, we're at the Snuggle Dome with Super Cuddle Squad versus Mad Villains. The werewolf kicks it off deep into the field. The Sauruses push forward on the line, but the Skinks can't get hold of the ball, even with a reroll. The Necromancers take advantage of this and rush in. Some of them watch the linemen, while Lupe, the loopy werewolf from London, charges in on all fours and scoops up the ball. He tries to slip past, but Finny Finfin -fin takes him down, and the ball drops into the hands of Little Licker. Along the line, there's more fighting, and Little Tickler is taken down. Then Little Licker is trampled by the werewolf. The Saurus has come back to provide protection and Little Licker slips away with the ball. But the zombie of my grandma stops the run. Little Snuggler tries to pick up the ball but apparently their hands are all too slick and it slides out. More fighting takes place all over the pitch. It wouldn't be Blood Bowl without some mindless violence. But the big surprise is when the giant Saurus is taken down by a zombie half his size. And Lupe keeps it flying around as he makes a skink fly around. My Gramps gets cleared out of the way so Little Wiggler can go for the ball, but it slides out of his hands. Over on the sidelines, Princess Snugglepants is pushed out of bounds so the audience can have their way with her. That was a poor choice of words. I apologize. Oh well, what are you going to do? Back to the game. The way is cleared for a skink once more, and again, it cannot hold onto the ball. The skinks should not have used so much hand lotion before they showed up to the field, and we go to the halftime with no one having scored a touchdown. What a disappointment this competition is starting out as with no score, and worse yet, no deaths. On to the second half. Lizardmen kick off the ball and it goes far right. Almost as far right as my crazy uncle who continues to believe every conspiracy he reads online. 
Their star player Wilhelm charges that side and clears the way. Now everyone heads in that direction. The Necromancers have made a line of death with their ball carrier behind it. And on the other side, they injure Huggle Bay. What a pity. I was looking forward to seeing the carnage she could inflict. Speaking of carnage, there is plenty to be handed around on both sides as an all-out brawl has taken the field. Bloody says enough of this and carries the ball to the opposite side where he has adequate protection. The lizards send their skinks to block the way. But mad villains break a hole in the center and they go there. The lizardmen break their little box, but as they get close to the ball carrier, the necromancers break out, taking down the giant saurus and running further to their right. They even manage to build a cage for Blunty the ball carrier. One of the lizardmen breaks through, but the undead are on him quickly and the way is open for Blunty to run in for the touchdown. That makes the score 1-2-0. With little time on the clock, it will take something of a miracle for Super Cuddle Squad to come back. The ghoul kicks, but does not manage to get it past the line of scrimmage. However, his foot goes flying into the stands, and the ball goes to Kissy Face. He beats his way down the field, telling the Necromancers, I dare you to try to take me down. I dare all of you. The mad villains stay clear of the lumbering beast, but they manage to slow him down. Finally, the lizardmen realize that they will only get it through with a pass, so Kissy Face tries to pass it to a skink who ran into the end zone. However, the ball is intercepted by the star player Werewolf, an ending that wraps up the luck of this game perfectly. One for mad villains, zero for Super Cuddle Squad, who just could not pick up the ball, then we move on to the grid, where light cycles litter the parking lot. We have greetings programs versus maximum ogre drive. The visiting team kicks the ball away and greetings programs gets right to work trying to fight their way through that huge wall of ogres. They make room on the left, where Flynn takes the ball with plenty of protection. Club the ogre breaks through but Rem kicks him back on his ass. Surprisingly, Flynn does not follow up the gap, but instead runs for cover behind the line in the center. The ogres wrap around them, and Quora is knocked out. The ogres are breathing right down Flynn's neck. I don't know if being a user is going to save him here, so he gets rid of the ball just before he's hit in the back and injured. The ogres move in on them, but Rinsler, who has the ball, kicks one of them over and his buddy Clue clears away another. Rinsler runs for it and gets way downfield. He gets coverage from his friends, but the ogres already have that planned out, if they're able to plan anything at all. Meat runs up to one of his small players and it's Air Snotling! But the little guy lands poorly and is injured. This clears the way for Rensler, but he doesn't go in yet. He waits near the end zone to let time run out. The Ogres show that they will spend the time beating up their players, so Rensler runs it in for the TD. 1-0 greetings programs. But there is still time on the clock in this half, so the Dark Elves kick it far. The Ogres lose their turn quickly, as one of them trips on the elf he was tackling, and the others push their way past the snotling. One of the other little runts hurries to protect the ball, but may be too late. So his buddy rushes to trip up the opposing players. It doesn't help much though, as they push past him, and Sark rushes in to grab the ball and go in for a second TD. Things are looking up for the home team as their cheerleaders shake their webbed butts. Oh, I just got the reference. Dark Elves, webs, the internet, computers, greetings programs, thus the team. Okay, on to the second half. The ball goes to Maximum Ogre Drive, 
and they will need it as they have two points to answer for. But it starts bad for them as their snotling is not able to catch the ball. Clue takes advantage of this and runs through a gap in the line, almost getting to the ball after a reroll. Number three tries to run around to the other side, but slips on the grass. Crackle runs to trip him, and Ozul runs to stop Clue, and Ozul knocks Clue out of the game! Undeterred, Tron runs up to Crackle and stomps on him, knocking off his head! We have a death in the game! First Blood goes to Tron! and the crowd goes wild. Another elf goes for the ball, but slips as well. Cheat runs up and grabs the ball and tries throwing it to Pop, but it pops right out of his hands. Sark attacks him and Tron comes up from behind, but Pop slips away and grabs the ball. He runs for it. He's nearing the center. He and he's tripped and injured on the field. But the ogres are not out of it yet, folks. The dark elves try to push them around, but they push back with a vengeance. Folks, this is what ogres are good at, let me tell you. I once knew an ogre who threw me around the room and knocked me through windows. But enough about my wife. Meat is pushed into the ball, which goes loose, and is picked up by Krom. He passes it to Tron, who runs it in for yet another TD. It's a humiliating defeat for the Ogres, so they instead decide to eat the audience. So we will move on to the next game. This one is played at half price all night, home of Cruel and the gang. A team straight from the Amazon. They are taking on the Lizardmen of Sleestack. Unfortunately for the scaly creatures, they are not great kickers. And the ball goes out of bounds. So the Amazonians get it on their far left side, which they are able to clear and push forward. They also move some of their players around the right. Sleestack attempts to plug the hole and even push in on the ball carrier. They try to push back, but they get a skull and the reroll brings the same, so they lose their turn at this crucial time. Sleestack takes full advantage, pushing in and taking down the ball carrier. The ball is loose. But in the middle of a crowd of Amazon women on the moon, I mean just Amazon women, Baba tries to break through but cannot and he's knocked back. The ball is picked up by I can't even begin to pronounce that name, so I will call her Sheila. Sheila pulls back with the ball and passes it to God knows who. The ball goes wild like silly pate. I can't even tell who it was meant for. Sleestack runs to pick it up, but they can't keep hold of it. The ball flails out of Leroy's hands. The Amazonians make room and try to run in for the ball, but apparently it's slippery because it falls out of their hands. Back on the other side, Sleestack sends for reinforcements. But one of them bounces off an opponent, and it's a turnover. Cruel and the gang sends Antianara out wide, close to the end zone. Akantha has trouble picking up the ball, but she gets it into her hands, runs up the sideline, and passes it to Akentha. The Lizardmen run to grab her, but not quickly enough. The sisters crowd around the ball carrier to protect her. So the Lizardmen spend the time beating up the players. At last, Antianara walks the ball in with too little time on the clock for the Lizardmen to do anything about it. And that sends both teams to halftime where they will drink their Gatorade. That is, if it's not too offensive to the Lizardmen, and plan for the next half. Cruel and the gang kick it to the visitors, and we'll see if they can answer back for the point. 
They break through the center, and Scarlet picks it up and moves forward. The Amazons see a gap near the back and take a run for it. Using a reroll to get the ball carrier. The ball goes loose and the gang rushes in. Bubba makes room on the left. And Ellie Mae sweeps up the ball and runs into a cage of Sauruses. I remember learning about Cagesauruses when I was in middle school. I wonder if they're on Jurassic Park. Anyway, Cruel and the gang breaks through the cage in the back. They then move further to the left while Cruel and the gang try to break through the scaly wall. At last they break through the back, so Sleestack has to move on. Then one of the skinks also moves into a protective position, and Ellie Mae wiggles into their protection. One of the Sauruses moves away. Cruel and the gang beat up a couple lizards before sending a pair of their girls after Ellie Mae. They take her down just two spaces away from the end zone. Oh, that is cruel, just as their name implies. But Sleestack is not taken out so easily. Bubba, who seems to be all over this field, rushes up from behind and knocks the ball right out of her hands. Sally the Skink is able to run right up and sweep the ball off the ground to run in for a TD. The game is tied one to one with only four turns left. This is likely to go into overtime. The ball is kicked far into the left. Almost as far left as my crazy Marxist cousin. This time it is not a touchback. To make matters worse, the Amazonians are unable to pick up the ball. Sleestack pushes their way through and a skink slithers through, heading for the ball. Acantha runs back and sweeps it up. She runs the ball forward and passes it to Akion, who slips and forces a reroll from her team. Bubba is not going to let her slip by like that, though, and he runs up for the tackle. The ball is ripe for the picking, and Sally rushes to get it, but slips on the grass. Cruel and the gang takes advantage of this, and somehow get their players around the ball. One of them takes Bubba down, then Tessapile sprints through, scooping up the ball on the way through. The Lizardmen try to hurry back to stop her from scoring, but it's too late. And on the last play of the game, Tessip, Tessiepa, Tepioka, Despian, an Amazon woman steps the ball into the end zone. And that's the final score of the game. Two to one, Cruel and the gang. And the final game is played at Girly Parts a place that guys like me are afraid to venture toward as we are very intimidated. This is a game between two Amazon teams. It's the Internet Dates versus the Amazon Primordials, who kick it off to the home team. The Internet Dates pick up the ball with ease and push a little forward. Then they set up a line along the midway point. The Amazon Primordials try to push past a player on the opposite side, but it takes down one of their own players. Back to the internet dates who push forward and make a solid cage for themselves. The Primordials call for reinforcements to stop the run, and they manage to break up the cage. The internet dates push back, and the runner makes it a few yards. Hannah jumps in there and takes down Anna's as Mac, as the Manage, the, the Invoker, taking her out of the game. The Primordials continue to bring over players to block the run, while the Internet Dates try to recover the ball. Oh, oh. 
at last someone gets pushed into the ball and it falls to the sideline. Fleabag hops in and grabs the ball, then pushes back behind her sisters. And will you look at that? Now a perfect line has formed along both sides right before the midway point. You can really tell these are evenly matched teams by the stalemate they have created. But the internet dates are not satisfied and they're pushing through. So the primordials run to the opposite side. Handing it off to... No! The ball goes loose! It's loose deep in their own territory and the internet dates gets it back. Fleabag runs back to get it and only thrashes Thrasha back. But then Don Knotts takes her down and himself down. How did Barney Fife get onto the field? I do not know. But doesn't he look great in a bikini? Thrasha tries to pick up the ball but can't keep hold of it. So she's knocked out of the way. and Fleabag picks it up from the Primordials. She runs it forward and hands it off to Customer Support. Customer Support puts her coverage on hold while she runs the delivery toward the end zone. Ordle the Dancer tries to catch her, but is beaten down, and Customer Support runs it in for a touchdown. She has delivered the package successfully to that family that is hunkering down, not wanting to answer the door. Nevertheless, they will all be happy to have gotten their waist trainer belts and wall sconces before halftime. This will be a difficult task since they have to kick it off to the visitors. And it lands right into the hands of Alexa, who's close to the front. Three of her sisters push forward on the right side so she can come over to them. The internet dates try to break through, but only get knocked over themselves. The primordials wedge a gap far to the right, and the ball carrier breaks through with some coverage. But the internet dates are able to plug the gap, and even get close to the carrier. Alexa tries again to hand the ball to customer support, but it bobbles out of her hands right next to the sideline. The internet dates try to pick it up, but it flies behind their lines. One of their players gets pushed into the wall, which bobbles through their hands and winds up in the capable hands of Bardina the Dancer. Customer support runs over and knocks heads with her, knocking herself out and knocking the ball way downfield. The crowd throws the ball back near the center, where it's picked up again by the internet dates. The primordials surround her, but can't take her down. So the Invoker tries to pass it out of the box, but it gets knocked aside. Fleabag knocks her coverage aside and runs for the ball. She picks it up. She makes a run for the end zone. The internet dates gang up on her. Talk about bad girls. but not bad enough as they cannot bring her down, so they surround her. They send one player out deep, so if they get the ball again, they can send it to her. The Primordials put coverage on her while the internet dates run to pick up the ball. But it's fumbled again. Mrs. Maisel of the Primordials comes out of nowhere and scoops it up. This is no joke, folks. She is passing it to Deal Days down the field, and she gets it. Her teammate tries to give her coverage, but is knocked down. And the opponents get up all around her. They take her down, stripping the ball from her. Nothing else, I'm afraid, but the clock runs out of time. What a game. It has ended 0-1 to one Primordials. Well, that was a nail-biter if I have ever seen one. So let's look at all of the scores one more time to see who will be moving on to the next round. Mad Villains overcame the veteran Super Cuddle Squad one to nothing. The Amazon Primordials delivered a nail-biting defeat to the internet dates one to zero. Greetings Program derezzed Maximum Ogre Drive three to nothing. And Cruel and the Gang sang a song of victory over Sleestack. 
that makes the leaderboard look like this. The Dark Elves lead, with Cruel and the gang taking up second, Amazon Primordial's third, Mad Villain's fourth. Those are the winners of the first round. Then it's Lee Stack in fifth, Internet Date sixth, Super Cuddle Squad seventh, and Maximum Ogre Drive taking it up the rear. I mean taking up the rear. Going into the next round, we're going to see the Necromatic Mad Villains against the Amazon Primordials, and the Dark Elf Greetings programs will take on the other Amazon team, Cruel and the Gang. That will do it for us here at the COVID Cup, folks. We hope you have enjoyed this. Be sure to subscribe to continue following this competition. Also check out our other campaigns and other crazy things we have on this channel. Thank you for watching, and happy gaming, everybody.